Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to this very impromptu, somewhat impromptu episode of Synchronicity University. It is a live panel. We are live streaming to Facebook. We are having an adventure in technology and forgetfulness and all kinds of things. Let's just say that. Those of you who are watching on Facebook, uh, you've been with me on Facebook for a little while now, about 17 <laughs> minutes. And so now this is the official YouTube start. So thank you so much for being here uh, to celebrate some truly amazing astrologers with me. My dear friend, Demetrius, uh, from the Queer Astrology Conference, uh, reached out to me. And that Queer Astrology Conference just took place last weekend. And he said, look, there are some brilliant astrologers. You've got to meet them. Um, and asked me if I wanted to connect with them and do a, uh, like a panel and talk about the astrology coming up and talk about the things that they spoke of at the Queer Astrology Conference as well. And I said, of course, because it's Demetrius. And those of you who have ever been to a really big astrology conference, let me say, uh, Demetrius's Midas Touch is somewhere there behind the scenes. He's been a force in the astrology world for many, many years uh, and a dear friend of mine for many, many years as well. So it's just such a privilege and a pleasure to get, get to, know to know these you. amazing people with you. So let's jump in. Uh, Alyssa, why don't you start? Please introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. My name is Alyssa Osorio, and I run Praxis Astrology. And, you know, in 2016, astrology just hit me like a bus. And I spent my days furiously just learning and seeing how other astrologers spoke about their findings. And even though it's been a lifelong love of astrology, I began my intense self-studying, you know, about four years ago. And studying astrology just reinforced the truths of the world that I felt and the way that inequality and, you know, injustice has really influenced the way that, you know, we deal with things and that people not only need their material needs met, but they need their spiritual needs met and they need to be, they need to feel seen and heard and validated. And so Praxis Astrology has just been you know, something that I've been doing to heal alongside my community and further the ideas of social justice and collective liberation. I love it. That's beautiful. And what about you, Daniel? Please introduce yourself. Yes, my name is Daniel Bernal. I am an astrologer in the Twin Cities, uh, living in St. Paul, Minnesota. Um, also, I uh, started really exploring astrology a few years ago um, and just getting more and more invested in um, the study of it, but then also the uh, connection to the community. Um, so I uh, run Divine Orbit Astrology, um, and as part of that, uh, also co-host the podcast Queer Skies with Drew Levanti. Um, and so definitely uh, all about elevating queer voices in astrology, um, and so excited to be able to um, continue to think about, uh, I, I mostly have a lens of Hellenistic astrology, uh, but recently I've been looking at the works of uh, Abu Mashar, recently translated by Ben Dykes. Um, and so definitely uh, excited to look at those traditional, more traditional ancient techniques and say, what, how do they speak to us living here in this context? Um, how do we, how do we, apply some of that, but also with a critical lens and, and how are we making sure that we are uh, showing up as our whole selves in, in the space of astrology as well um, and using it as tools for uh, individual collective liberation um, and, and being in better community with each other too. I love that connecting the traditional with the modern. I mean that I truly believe that astrology is a living practice. And that's exactly how we do it. We take the techniques, but we understand that as we evolve, astrology evolves as well. So I love that you're a part of that. Quan, your turn. Hi, my name is Quan Tracy Cherry. I practice out of Kansas City, Missouri. And uh, I've been practicing full time for almost uh, 25 years here in what I call the suburb of the Bible Belt. Uh, I see myself as an evolutionary astrologer, and as a lawyer, I have a license to practice. I tell people I went to law school, not only did I become 
an underachiever in law school, but I studied spiritual law. And I do the same things I would do as a lawyer, community uh, and client relations, continuing educating myself, being very clear about ethical boundaries and, and how to work astrology into our day-to-day life. Uh, I don't, my website is belief is not required. And I chose that name specifically because I was, I grown weary of people saying, I don't believe in astrology. And I would say, no, it's a language that uses, that's like saying, I don't believe in speaking more Spanish when I'm south of the Rio Grande. So it's like, it is a part of our ability to communicate with each other and transcend to learn our charts so we can transcend our charts uh, and then reintegrate from a higher purpose. So our identities are sacrosanct. How I show up as a black male, I'm, as a black male, uh, it's really important to be honored and the queer, the gay, uh, the father, uh, and most of my clients are women, 75%. So I talk to them about the difference in how the signs are experienced from their perspective. And as a male, I wouldn't ever presume to, to not begin by believing a woman if she said someone was swarmy or oppressive or dominating. And it's the same with race. You are your own authority. And I think astrology gives us the neutrality to be able to talk about it in a way that everybody wins. And so the queer conference was just yawn <laughs> in that ability to do that. And I applaud Demetrius for putting up with my, um, sometimes my technically uh, challenged self. <laughs> Yeah, it is incredible how powerful community is and being with people who understand you. I I truly believe like when you're with people who understand you and that's part of the power of just astrology conferences is that you get to be with people who speak your own language. It it brings a whole other uh, layer to it, a whole other factor to it. And just you feel like less of an alien. When you're with people like you, especially when you're with other astrologers, you know, and when you add the layer of other shared identities, it becomes that much more uh, meaningful as well. So let's jump in with transit. So what do you guys think are some of the biggest transits and your interpretation of coming up, let's say, either this summer or you can say till the end of the year? Um, and so I'm going to go in a little bit of a different order now so that everyone has a chance at some point to go first. Let's start with Daniel this time. What do you think are some of the really big transits that you're looking forward to uh, over the course of this year to come? Thank you. Um, I think that uh, I talked about this a little bit in my um, presentation too. There was a lot of buzz with Jupiter and Capricorn um, and trying to think about how are we going to go from Jupiter and Sagittarius, this amazing harmonious connection between uh, the sign that Ju- one of the signs that Jupiter rules, um, and then going into Capricorn, which traditionally is a place of fall, not being recognized as that ebullient leader uh, energy, that 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 growth energy, um, and really understanding how we can navigate that space. Um, so it's been very interesting, and, and of course, one of the hallmarks of um, the Jupiter Jupiter's journey through Capricorn this year has been these uh, intense Pluto conjunctions, uh, and we are in the middle of the second one of those three right now. I'm definitely feeling that, uh, especially as the sun moves through Cancer, opposing that, shining the light on exactly what we are needing to see at this moment as we think about um, the, the Plutonian, uh, themes of deep structure and deep change, what is buried very, uh, beneath the surface that, uh, Jupiter is just kind of only able to pull out, (laughs) um, and really also kind of have that illuminatory factor. So I think, um, whether we think about that from a personal perspective in terms of where, um, Capricorn is in your chart, um, or whether we think about that from a mundane perspective of 
um, what are we as a society needing to really get to the root of and really say what, what radically needs to grow and change and be dissected? Um, I think those are, those are some of the, the transits that I don't, I don't know if I'm looking forward to them, but I'm definitely looking at them <laughs> um, and definitely thinking about how uh, in a couple months, I think when we see that third and final um, conjunction between Jupiter and uh, Pluto that we are we are using that to move forward and we're really using that to um, as a society decide what we want to uh, plant for the next you know if, if, if Pluto is that buried underground energy what are we going to replace that we have unearthed what are we going to put back into and invest in our communities that we have rooted out um, Definitely, definitely a year-long pattern that we're we're seeing, um, and I'm excited to to see. Um, there's just so much I think that we are tired of, and people are saying enough is enough, um, and change is happening, however incremental. And let's not let that momentum die. Let's keep that going. That's um, that's what I'm most excited about this year. Yeah. What about you, Quan? What are some big trends that you're seeing this year for the rest of the year that you think uh, should well, be to watch? Certainly, uh, I look at coming out of the Venus retrograde uh, in terms of that 40 days that she spent in Gemini. And we got a really good symbol of that from the warning labels being placed on the president's tweets. The retrograde Venus was like, well, what do we really value? We want our, I call it the Humpty Dumpty Venus, where we don't take anything apart that we can't put back together, right? And we know what happened to him, pride, right? And so now we have the Mars going retrograde in September in Aries. And I want to piggyback a little bit off of what uh, uh, Alicia, is I say that correctly? Alyssa. Alyssa. Yeah. Uh, that the first rule of, medita of mediation is to show up. So, and the fire signs are the show up signs. So if you're fire and you're, you're here to show yourself best through action, and so that Mars retrograde, uh, that nine to 10 weeks, you know, a number of sufferer jets, women who fought for the right to vote, had Mars in retrograde. So it's about really going internally and speaking to that inner warrior. And I tell all my clients, retrogrades are not weak. You know, Venus is in her fullness as the morning star. This new moon, she is as far away from the sun as possible. So we have that ability to really see our core identity, the sun, as it opposes those Capricorn planets. And Cancer Capricorn is mommy, daddy. It's, you know, but both are responsible. We need responsible compassion, that one pillar of the high priestess, but we also need judgment and severity. We need limits. And the ebullient nature of Jupiter and Sag, okay. Love it, but what did our philosophies met us? How do we use that Jupiter privilege that comes so easily in Sagittarius? What did we, how did we use our abundance? How do we use our resources? And then when the resources pair down in Capricorn, then we have some markers to call on. We have some people. I remember when you gave me this last year. I remember you took that extra five minutes to talk to me about something and they come back and help you when most needed. And so Capricorn and Sagittarius really are our introduction into, well, what kind of effing citizens do you really want? And when you talk about, and, and when you listen to the beginning of what you were saying, uh, Nadia, and I, am I saying your name right? Because I yes, get- Yes, perfect. Uh, when, when you talk about brilliant, when you listen to that, what you re-recorded before, you use the word brilliance. And I'm a big I Ching of file. I love the I Ching because it just cuts through things. And hexagram number 30 talks about brilliance or fire. And they go into, we get caught up in the, the flame, but we forget about the law or we forget about the candle wax that feeds the flame. So it's the philosophy that feeds the spirit. The other, and I'll say this one last thing, I am looking toward August 15th when Uranus goes stationary retrograde because that 14th, 15th of August, you know, the volume knobs are turned up when they're stationary 
And I did my, spe my presentation to the queer astrology on the, the cyclic relationship between Saturn and Uranus, which happens every 46 years, they're new. And George Floyd Jr. was 46 years old. So he's born in, he was born in the disseminating cycle, the last disseminating cycle in 1973. And the disseminating cycle between Saturn and Uranus is, what do you believe? What future vision are you willing to talk about with the passion of a pastor or good motivational TED talk or something? You know, so we're in the cycle coming up until February where it goes into the last quarter. So I give Congress and I give policymakers, you got into February of 2021 for you to take this vision that we've been talking about. And I want to see something concrete in Saturn and Uranus go into last quarter in February of 2021, or shut up. I want to, sh you need to show up, pay attention, tell the truth. And then the fourth rule of mediation is don't get attached to the outcome. That's powerful. And I think that next year, the ongoing square of Saturn and Uranus, oh boy. Like, yeah. again, you were mentioning earlier, because this is kind of take two for those of you watching this <laughs> on YouTube, right? And Alyssa was talking about, you know, social justice That's and right. social change. You. And I was thinking like, it's in 2021 that is, it is going to be that much more important to understand your chart and what you need for self-care because so many people are going to be feeling that much more driven towards yeah. creating change in the world, but then taking care of ourselves in the process and owning the change we wish to be, that is where a lot of power also is found. So um, I love that you mentioned that. It is going to be next year, the square. Oh, boy, that'll be interesting. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah. Alyssa, what are you excited about for this uh, year in astrology coming up? So, for 2020 in particular, the rest of 2020 anyways. <laughs> the rest of 2020. So, you know, Saturn has retrograded back into Capricorn this month. And, you know, my Saturn return is going to be exact again on Thursday. Congratulations. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Enjoy that. <laughs> and so, you know, because I have this special relationship with, with Saturn, he comes back to check to see if we're maintaining his beautifully minimalistic and structurally sound house well. And since 2017, Saturn has been giving us the rules of how to water his plants, how to make sure the dishes are done the way he wants it, how to clean the coffee maker and humidifier. And so he's back in to check, have you really learned that lesson of making your life structurally sound? And, you know, the Saturn in Aquarius folks got a slight reprieve, but, you know, the Saturn in Cap, people, you might experience some redirection on your path through what seems like a loss or a crisis. And you're just going to rebuild your things the way you want it to look and not the way other people prefer it. And I also, you know, a lot of this energy you know, we just had this Venus retrograde. We just had this Mercury retrograde. I feel, and we also had these huge eclipses. I think we're going to be unpacking those lessons, even though they just happened throughout the rest of the year. So, you know, and with Mercury just stationing direct and Mercury still squaring Mars, I think this means that people are going to check in with their reactions on the way they get upset. So for me, I'm someone who checks out of conversation when I'm upset, um, just because I've been seen as the aggressor when I'm expressing and I'm unlearning. I'm unlearning that holding back is the best way. And sometimes our anger is the most important information for others to have. And it helps me initiate boundaries and it helps other people understand that you know this is a line and this is how you take care of me and so you know i say as like you know we're still in mercury shadow and you know mercury is going back and forth with mars that i really encourage people to 
don't repress, don't repress. Don't let something become uncontrollable because these lessons that you're learning at the very beginning of Mars in Aries are going to help guide you through some of the intensity of this energy. And, you know, I think. <laughs> That's Another. about right. That's yeah, about there we right. go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's the Mars retrograde season right there. I I do believe that so much. As you were talking about Mars retrograde, I was thinking, oh boy, all those squares, man. Like all mm -hmm. those squares are gonna be coming up. Like that exhale encapsulated it perfectly. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> That's how I'm feeling about it. If I'm being really straightforward and really honest about it. I made these uh, Mars retrograde special horoscopes and it was hard because it's like, wow, there's this really tough energy and you just want to make a video over for 20 minutes. You're going, oh, okay, like, you know, don't worry, ease up, you know, but, uh, but yeah, it's going to be powerful, right? Yes. Yeah. And I also think, you know, one, one very last thing is, Juan said something about mommy daddy energy and I really feel with these last rounds of the cancer Capricorn eclipses that just happened we are going to be challenged to integrate both responsibility and care and for me I you know some of y'all may have heard of inner child or reparenting work and this is a really great time to put those skills to use and to think about kind of like the parent that you would want for yourself and to speak to yourself. You know, we're so, we're so used to um, thinking at the way our parents took care of us, but we can also, you know, change the way we talk to ourselves. And I think that's going to be so important and like holding time to play. You know, holding time where you paint abstractly or you cuddle with a soft pillow and just watch some television. And, you know, also some time where you grind really hard on that project that's going to benefit you in the long term because we need both. We need both of those energies and to integrate both of those energies if we're going to get through, if we're going to get through this. Yeah, for sure. And it's very powerful to learn how to parent ourselves. It's almost like it allows us to love our parents that much more once it is that we do that inner work to understand that, okay, now we can parent ourselves. It's, yeah. um, it is incredibly meaningful uh, and it just changes you from the inside out, literally from the inside out, but it can change every area of your life when you, when you find that space within. Uh, it's self-care on a literal level, but it's also that uh, other layer of it structural change as you mentioned within the inner structure and actually Alyssa is somebody that I met when I was in New York City when I was doing a live event back in January uh, thank you Alyssa so it's really <laughs> nice to get to know you in this whole other way you sharing your brilliance this time is awesome so let's talk about queer astrology conference I'm really curious to learn about what you guys presented about uh, and to give people like a little bit of a preview, maybe a couple of minutes where you are encapsulating some of the things that you talked about uh, in your presentations that you gave for Queer Astrology Conference. And just for reference, I want to say uh, Queer Astrology Conference, the website is qac.queerastrology.com. So it's quack, qac.queerastrology.com. So this time, let's start with Juan. Talk about your presentation that you gave for the Queer Astrology Conference. Uh, thank you. Uh, it was called Living on the Spectrum of Personal Responsibility and Individual Freedom, Saturn and Uranus. And when I talk to Aquarian clients, because I still pull in, I don't dismiss the information we had before 1781 about Saturn being connected to Aquarius. And I talk about the eightfold cycle of new crescent first quarter that we do a lot with the sun and moon but you can do that with any planetary pairing that you see as a dyad venus and mars mercury and jupiter uh, and so 
the and I presented eight charts of each one of the cycles. But my favorite, one of my favorite parts of it is that I researched the Combahee River Collective, which is a radical black feminist group in the 70s, which started under a disseminating cycle of really being able to come out of the National Black Feminist Organization and move further to the left. And they're coined or they are they brought in identity politics and then later with uh, Kimberly Crenshaw uh, intersectionality. And so I put that together. Other queer artists such as uh, Janelle Monet, uh, James Baldwin, Bernard Rustin, who supported Martin Luther King Jr. And then there was another part of the table that I looked at the Black Lives Matter people and individuals, co-founders. And then the last, I paid homage to my legal education where I looked at landmark civil rights or laws like Plessy versus Ferguson, Dred Scott, uh, Lawrence v. Kansas, Lawrence v. Texas, where they struck down uh, the, the, sodomy, the sodomy laws. Uh, and then, of course, Ogan Felby Hodges, where we got the right to marry, same sex right to marry. And so that was on a table. But what gave me the most hope out of was not only reading the chat log, which I read and it just was hilarious. I mean, they made me laugh, right? Was one, uh, what gave me the most hope, Maddie, was the aspect that in the last quarter cycle of Uranus and Saturn, uh, we got an Audre Lorde, Alicia Garza, one of the co-founders of Black Lives Matter, and Mihail, Mihail Gorbachev. And the last quarter is where we challenge society's rules and make policy out of it. And so Mahal Gorbachev was really important in the late 80s in the balsamic cycle where we're straddling past and future uh, with perestroika, which means restructuring, and glasnost, which means transparency, which are words that are Saturn in your life. And the group was engaging. I felt safe. Uh, it, it was just a beautiful time. And so I have hope because of those three people in last quarter, Audrey Lord, rest in power, uh, but Alicia Garza, and then the other two women co-founders are balsamic, Saturn and Uranus. So they really are here to dream us into a new vision about how we can hate each other and coexist on the planet together. Along with Colin Kaepernick, who would have thought that four years ago, his kneeling would turn into George Floyd and where we're going forward with just that one act. Have you looked at Colin Kaepernick's chart? Because I have not. He is, all I, he's a, a Sagittarius, I mean, a Scorpio. And I look at him through the Venus star. He's an evening star, which makes him abstract and idealistic. And then it's a Leo energy. And he's born in the same nine month cycle as Lizzo and Adele. So they all have this evening star solar celebrity power. And when, you know, when Leo comes from the heart, uh, it's amazing. Another athlete that was born under very strong Venusian energy was uh, Cassius Clay to Muhammad Ali. So I really impress upon my clients. Uh, his moon is in Aries, Collins. Kaepernick, moon is in Aries. I forget where his Mars is, but he's a sad, I mean, a Scorpio with the moon in Aries, which is um, Billy Graham. Mm. This was a Scorpio, the first one with the moon in Aries. So that's that Aries fighting spirit. And I do think his Mars is in Libra, but he's a, uh, he's a, and I do the Chinese astrology. So I would remember him as a Scorpio fire rabbit, <laughs> you know, that ability to really strategize spiritually about what most matters to me. That's beautiful. Yeah, I'm curious to learn more about uh, Kaepernick's chart. And it's interesting, the, the connections that you just made, the different ways in which we bring forward these archetypal energies is so fascinating. I love it. Yeah. Okay. Alyssa, what about you? What did uh, you share about at Queer Astrology Conference? So my presentation was using astrology and intuition towards social justice practice practice. And for me, you know, I feel like as intuitives, we have a responsibility to use our gifts towards collective liberation. 
and inequality limits our ability to live in and embrace you know our full humanity and also our ability to connect with others so we used a couple of tools like you know planetary hours to time maybe once a day where you're going to do you're going to write a letter to the ceo of a company or you're going to go out and put on your mask and go protest or you're going to maybe use a venus time to make a beautiful sign or a banner for someone you know use a moon time to care for and love on the people who you're in the movement with even like if it's baking your friend who's been out protesting some cookies a nice dinner you know like just taking care of people and for my talk i was really interested in rewriting the stories of the planets because i think sometimes people don't integrate different cultures when it comes to their astrology practice and so i was encouraging folks to look into you know egyptian mythology and you know the way the way other people talk about these planetary stories and i gave each sign a little social justice mantra as they're going <laughs> through the work and you know something to remind themselves as they're in it and just some tips, you know, you know, how to take the personal, your personal, examine yourself and look at yourself and think about your biases, your internalized biases, and then the interpersonal. So for me, um, a lot of my clients are queer, trans, non-binary, black and brown, people of color. And the way I built my clientele was, you know, I read all these astrology books and I asked a lot of questions because I was like, you know, you're, you know, these might not reflect your life. Can you tell me about your life? Can we share? And the structural, so the bigger governmental structures, like what can we do about these structures and how can we get involved? And, you know, just really trying to, get people to think about it but also to get people to have fun in the movement so like how do we ground you know can you take some time to sit under a tree and write you know how do we support each other you know can you have a group chat with your friends where they're cheering you on as you're doing something and how do we have fun so you know i had said before that when i wake up in the morning i listen to very poppy femi fun music and I dance and I shake and I jiggle and it looks so silly but for me it's grounding ourselves in joy because we're going to need it we're going to need it if we're going to show up especially as people are experiencing pain and despair and you know it's going to be a time where we have to build joy in ourselves yeah, and I think we're going to get lots of practice next year in particular, Saturn square Uranus. <laughs> we are going to get practice to figure out self-care, but still moving forward in terms of social change and the change we wish to experience in the world for ourselves and for others, working towards the change that is our responsibility to contribute to. So it should be very powerful to, to see. We've only glimpsed it. We got a little bit of a glimpse this year, right? But it's intriguing how you use astrology, Alyssa, to understand self-care in the process of understanding your unique way of contributing to positive change in the world. I love that. Yes, thank you. I mean, it, I've been organizing for, since I was 16 years old, so 13 years, and it's been kind of like a lifelong journey. Thank you. Yeah, I understand because... When I was a little girl, I was like Lisa Simpson. Like I so relate to Lisa Simpson because that was me, that, that, uh, that kid uh, right there wanting to change the world in, uh, in a good way. So it's wonderful to see how astrology continues to be part of that. And so what about you, Daniel? What did you talk about at the Queer Astrology Conference? Yeah, um, I've... 
feel like in a lot of ways. So I talked about a, a book that I'm super passionate about and a framework of emergence strategy by Adrienne Marie Brown. Um, Adrian Marie Brown describes herself as a queer, black, ra multiracial lover of life living in Detroit, amongst other things, including uh, tarot. And, um, and uh, just, it, it has been so inspirational to my work in educational spaces um, that I decided, hey, how does this apply to astrological spaces? Um, so how do we take um, some of the a uh, framework that articulates uh, how resilient communities, including Black, Indigenous, uh, people of color, uh, queer communities, feminist communities, have used these strategies to um, really model their relationships, their organizing work, um, and create uh, an amazing amount of change, both in their communities and in the larger communities, while practicing all of those um, amazing self-care strategies, uh, community care, um, and so pulling that into astrology, both in the sense of um, being able to look at some of the concepts and challenge those, such as, um, you know, we tend to describe square aspects, you know, we've talked about the, those crunchy squares, crunchy is my favorite adjective to use with squares. Um, but how can we view that from a perspective of, yeah, we know that the world has chaos in it, we know that the world um, is going to put us in these challenging situations or other people in the world are going to put us in these challenging situations, systems will. Um, so what do we do about that? And how do we use, um, so one of the elements of, of emergent strategy is intentional adaptation. And those are, it's not just change, right? That intentional part is that purpose and that um, strategic, you know, how do we use the knowledge that we have? How do we honor the knowledge that we have? Um, and the change part, I think, is is related to that crunchy square, right? When we are discom when we experience discomfort or we experience a need for change, do we take the call to that? Um, and what informs us as we decide what change is necessary? Um, so that's one example of of kind of the the how the elements of of um, emergent strategy I see kind of related to astrology. I go through all the different aspects, um, conjunctions, oppositions, um, sextiles and trines and kind of map them to there. Um, we talk about a lot of different concepts and techniques and just, I, I really crammed a bunch in that, in that one hour workshop. I had a disclaimer at the beginning, I was like, emergent strategy is vast and rich and cannot be talked about in any <laughs> hour long conversation. Um, but I was so incredibly excited to see all of the different people that had come to my talk because that because of emergent strategy, um, fellow students of that that framework to say, yeah, I want to learn more about how it's related to astrology, um, but also being able to find people in the astrological community who are like, oh, emergent strategy, what does that mean? What is that? Um, and I think the I ended my talk with some questions that we as a community of astrologers could take on not only in our practice or when we're interpreting a chart, but also in relating to each other. Um, we talked, I think, maybe before we started the YouTube recording about um, just how the conference came together and created these beautiful spaces of care and support for each other. And, and um, I addressed in my talk, and, and there were questions afterwards, um, you know, what is call out culture? What is cancel culture? How do we call each other in? Um, and those are, those are all things that I witnessed happening during the conference in this temporary community. Um, and so I think emergent strategy isn't just for charts and isn't just for um, the cosmology, but is also for this community that we have um, that is incredibly diverse, that has different experiences and identities that we're going to find conflict in. And so how do we uh, enter into right relationship with each other? Um, how do we honor the voices that we need to honor? How do we um, celebrate who we are while continuing to heal and transform dynamics that aren't serving us in this community? Um, how do we hold each other accountable for that in ways that are compassionate and actually uh, achieve the change that we're looking for? So um, yeah, you can't fit all that into an hour, but I was honored to be able to start those conversations um, with a group of people and, and I've already started to connect to people who are like, we need to do a whole conference about emergent strategy and astrology. 
Um, and uh, some people tweeted at Adrian Marie Brown and she was like, yeah, here's some other astrologers that are doing emergent strategy work. Like, let's make it happen. And I was like, all right, we got our, <laughs> we got our next charge. <laughs> and what great questions or what a great beginning to be having just as we just got a little bit of a taste of Saturn and Aquarius. But as we were talking, I was thinking, you know, we as a collective, as a worldwide collective, we might be immersed in these very questions once we get to Pluto and Aquarius. I mean, I think that is the huge shift in consciousness that is coming up with Pluto and Aquarius trying Uranus. I know that's not just 2020. We're looking at 2026, 2027. But I'm so big picture, you know, Aquarian that I am. I'm all like, yeah, let's look at the really big picture. And so as you were sharing, I was thinking these very questions, we will be in the, in the depth of it, right? In the guck of these questions and wanting to find the answers with a, an intensity, especially once we get later this decade with Pluto and Aquarius. Yes, for sure. Yeah. So um, I just want to quickly take, thank you so much for that, Daniel, and sharing, and how I just love how all of you in your own unique ways are sharing um, this connection between your truth and being yourself, but then also caring about the collective and caring about others and, and having astrology be an expression of your truth, but also using it as a tool towards creating meaningful change in the world. It's such a beautiful, inspiring thing to see. So thank you for that. I want to very quickly take a couple of questions or, or at least just point out people are sharing online and I appreciate you guys so much. Kasia uh, was saying she's in deep need of guidance. So Kasia, please feel free to reach out to any of the astrologers you see here. In a moment, I'll let you know, or at least each one of them will let you know how to reach them directly. And uh, whichever astrologers, anybody watching, if you resonate with one, what you hear or somebody saying, I would encourage you to reach out to them personally, uh, see about connecting on a level of consultation or whatever service it is that they provide, because hopefully that will give you the, the guidance that you're hoping for. We all need guidance from time to time. We all uh, reach out to astrologers from time to time as well. I have people that I know I reach out to when I need that other perspective. So regardless of where you are, see, everybody's nodding right now, because especially when you're an astrologer, you know what it is to reach out uh, to another astrologer that you trust as well. Wherever you are in your astrological journey, there are people there who can provide guidance. So I hope that you get that. Hello, everybody who is here. Rhonda, Susan, thank you for being here. Susan is an amazing uh, psychic. I had a reading with her a couple of years ago. It was a very powerful experience. So thank you for that, Susan. Now, Rhonda says something interesting here. She says, I wish I could take the whole world on my lap and hug and soothe them and tell them it's going to be okay. And just drop fear, judgment of yourself and others and be love. I'm a Virgo and a stellium in Virgo. That makes a lot of sense where you're like, live in the moment, right, Rhonda? That is what uh, the Virgo energy part of what the Virgo energy is here to teach us. That's very powerful. Um, it is the work of a lifetime though, I think for some of us, and we are learning to own love and be loved that much more fully. I do believe that very much. Thank you, Peter, for being here. Thank you, everybody. Okay, so before I let these wonderful people go, you guys are so brilliant. And like Demetrius said, each one of you impressed me in your own unique ways. And I love featuring other astrologers on my channel. And so I am putting this out there to each one of you. As you are ready, it is an open invitation and I'm making it very publicly right here. But I would love for each of you to create a unique video for my YouTube channel. And if that's something you want to do, if you'd like to share more of whom it is you are and just be in your space and, and share from the heart, just reach out to me and we will make that happen and i would just be so honored to have you guys shine more of your light uh in any way i can be part of that uh, it would be such a blessing so now let us know let everybody out there know uh how to reach you let's start with let's take it back to Alyssa. we started with Alyssa first and we're going to take it to Alyssa as well Alyssa, daniel and then juan we will uh save 
the best for last, but <laughs> each of you really are the best in your own unique ways, which I love. And I, let me just say, I love where we are in astrology. Like as I was hearing you guys talk, I was thinking how, like honestly, I thought, how blessed are we that we get to be in this time and space where each one of us can own our light and share it and find a platform, find an audience simply by being ourselves. We have these incredible tools like the online environment and all the spaces there um, where we get to do that. And I think that that is, uh, you know, the best of it we've gotten to see here today. So uh, we truly live in very fortunate times and it'll be very interesting to see how that changes and accelerates in the period ahead, in the years ahead in particular. Okay, but let's start with you, Alyssa. Um, is it, uh, or how is it that people can reach you? Any closing thoughts? Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, closing thoughts is that if folks are interested in figuring out how to show up for social justice, please hit me up. We'll look at your chart and we'll go through it together and we'll see, you know, what resources you have. And so the ways that you can reach me for consultation is you can go on praxisastrology.com. Praxis is spelled P-R-A-X-I-S. And if you would like to follow me on social media, on Instagram, I am praxis underscore astrology. And on Twitter, I am just praxis astrology, like it's one big word smushed together. I love the underscore. Let me tell you, I don't know how it happened. But I ended up with a whole bunch of Instagram accounts named Nadia Shaw. But the only one I can access is the Nadia underscore Shaw. So I've got all these other accounts out there with my picture and all kinds of pictures, actually. <laughs> one is of me as Alien Dorothy. There was one pride. When I used to do pride in Toronto, <laughs> I saw it as Halloween uh, uh -huh. part two. And so I would go all out with the body paint, everything. And so one year I was uh, Alien Dorothy from Wizard of Oz. Mm. And uh, for some reason, one of the accounts has that with me there. <laughs> but yes, the underscore, nothing wrong with the underscore. I'll tell you that. <laughs> okay, Daniel, go next. How can people reach you? Yeah, so uh, my practice is Divine Orbit Astrology. I have a website, divine-orbit.com. Not, I should have underscored, but yeah, uh, okay. the dash is there. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm also on Twitter at Divine Orbit Astrology and, uh, um, or sorry, Instagram at Divine Orbit Astrology uh, on Twitter as Bernal Orbit, um, on Facebook as well. Um, but I, I really have loved doing more um, solar return work. And again, that uh, referencing the work of Abu Mashar that was translated recently. Um, and so I loved, I would love to um, work with people who are looking at kind of a longer, longer term forecast for their um, chart, but uh, definitely excited to be uh, learning as much from clients. Um, as I said, I'm, I'm only a few years into my practice, so definitely looking to build more um, of, uh, of a working relationship with different clients. Um, and also mentioned the Queer Skies uh, uh, podcast, which I do on uh, YouTube and um, anywhere where you can find major podcasts out there, Apple, Google Play. Well, I'm really looking forward to seeing you continue to, to grow and shine bright in the years ahead. Thank mm -hmm. you, Daniel and Quan. How can people get in touch? Well, my website is beliefisnotrequired.com. That's belief is not required. Instagram is uh, Quan Tracy Cherry, and uh, Twitter is just Quan T Cherry. Somehow Tracy didn't get in there. Quan T. Uh, this has been beautiful. I've been closing. Uh, I call my dancing music my happy music playlist, and uh, so I get you on that one, Alyssa. In terms of just uh, and Janet Jackson is often included, uh, and it's about the balance between the Aquarius uh, Simpson, Lisa Simpson, but Aquarius is opposite Leo. We have to know how to shake our groove thing. Uh, you know, we have to dance and play. It's a both and. and well, so, there's something uh, that people don't know about me, but I <laughs> am actually, maybe if they've followed me long enough, uh -huh. I am a huge fan of reggaeton music. And it was actually, when I went to Mexico almost eight years ago, 
and I heard the music, it changed my life. The music yeah. called me to move there uh, like six weeks later after my vacation. And if you know anything about reggaeton music, which I didn't even know it existed like eight years ago, <laughs> you know there's, there is shaking your funky groove thing happening in that. <laughs> And you said eight years, and I, I do work with the Venus star point. You know, Venus returns to herself every eight years. And she's our diplomat. You know, Venus is what I look at in terms of we're looking at nat national uh, energies, nation's chart. I do a lot of relational work, a lot of mediation. I mean, Moon, Mercury, and Libra, hello. Uh, and uh, I'm sure it's you're just, good at it. yeah. I, I love, and families, what I'm loving about my is that I'm seeing intergenerational families and uh and the covid virus i saw a number of families online up in the beginning um but it's it's just a beautiful i, I agree with you Nadia. it's a beautiful time to have a virtual community because the civil rights community had a lot of the physical tangible churches to operate out of so we have to recreate that kind of unity and communication and that safety and communication to get through the other side yeah thank you so much everybody and thank you everybody joining us as well whether you joined us live on facebook this will be up for you to watch the unedited version on <laughs> facebook okay <laughs> the the first take and the second take in one video and of course this is on youtube as well i don't know if i will be able to uh tag properly on facebook if possible i will but definitely in youtube i will be sure to link to their websites uh, in the description below so you can catch that there and i am sure that in the uh, years ahead i will continue to see each of you continue to blaze your own unique pathways in astrology and beyond so thank you guys for joining me and thank, thank you. you to my amazing audience thank you guys for being uh, here with me so much it is such a blessing to share these moments with you where i get to celebrate uh, some incredible minds, incredible astrologers with you. And I'm so grateful for that. And thank you for watching. Until we connect again, take care. Bye. And the live stream is stopped. There we go. I think, I believe. But thank you guys very much. I You're wanted welcome. to be thank sure to take a moment to say thank you to each one of you. And I appreciate you guys so much. And I was very sincere in all the things that I said. Whenever you're ready, feel free to reach out and you would be very welcome. And there's details, right? There's like a, a template that I have. It comes with a small honorarium and promotion. And, um, and it just, it's just so lovely to see you guys shine. It truly is. Thank and you. I'm so glad that you guys are making waves in your own unique ways. Thank, you so, uh, thank you so much. This is All right, I appreciate you. Yeah, I All appreciate right. each and every one of you. And I look forward to continuing to get to know you. And hopefully we'll meet at a conference one day. There is a conference happening next year, the ESAR conference. Mm -hmm. That should be mm -hmm. next summer. And I think that's probably when conferences are going to kick up again. Uh, and so wherever it is and however it is, now we are connected. Okay. Okay. Yes. Cool. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye.